Welcome back. Always lovely to have you here. Thank you. And I, I don't know what to say. You were extraordinary in this movie. And I'm watching you and I'm like, wow, I really honestly believed that you were an Arab woman. First off, how did the script come to you? How did you hook up with Ruba? I got to meet her about a year beforehand while she was, uh, well, at a screening for Cairo time around that time. And uh, I had I knew Patricia Clarkson and she was just singing Ruba's praises and just, Ruba was so lovely, just fall in love with her right away. And uh, uh, we remembered each other she, and she, uh, she just came to me with this. Very lucky. Well, very, I mean, very lucky. But you just did such, I mean, you just enveloped her. Uh, how, where did you even start to become an Arab woman? Ruba, Ruba herself. Ruba is an Arab woman, and and there's a great comfort in knowing that she's right there by your side, <laughs> directing the movie. And uh, I, there were, there's not. I've said this, but there isn't really a lot of writing, yeah. uh, things to read it, uh, that Syrian women have written. It's just their their voices are so suppressed that their their pen is suppressed as well. So there was a book from the 70s that had. You know, when when there was a moment where the country was going to could open up, um, and there was some there was one book that was written at that time. I read that, read a lot of poetry, um, and other than that, really spoke to Ruba in a, a lot. Is it hard you to know? get that that voice, the tonality? Like, you, wow, you really nailed it. Well, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> but what, what kind of a challenge is that for you to do? I mean, for any actor to do an accent, I mean, but that's a tough one to do, the Arabic woman, I think. Well, it its particular challenge is the dichotomy between incredible intelligence and uh, and and the women there are encouraged to get full educations and to and and they have a lot of a feisty nature and then there's a lot of suppression and almost a deification of the women to the point where they're they're just they're deified suppressed <laughs> they're like but you have to exist on another plane not actually in real life yeah. and so there's the whether um, the, the choice is theirs in, in, in Damascus, whether you're going to be covered or not covered, and their husbands. Mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't necessarily indicate free reign. You can't drive on your own, you cannot leave the country, uh, you can't live alone. My character Fatima couldn't, can't live alone, even though she's a grown woman, right. widowed, has to go move back into the home with her brothers. So. There's not, there's not a, there's not a, you can't really express yourself. You can't express yourself. And in a certain way, love becomes perverted under those circumstances. Yeah, it's just amazing culture and everything to, to learn about. I know that I personally fell in love with Alexander Siddiq when I saw Cairo Time. He's very handsome. Don't know about you, but mm -hmm. I'm quite jealous that you got to have those scenes with him. <laughs> uh, how do you know, Marissa, when you get on set and there's going to be that chemistry? Well, Ruba's good at that. Ruba's Ruba's did the casting, and I, and I did see Cairo time, and he is incredibly handsome and captivating. And um, well, it's beyond gentlemanly. He has a certain sense of dignity and integrity that he carries with him. That's that's just um, you feel like you can lean on him. Yeah, because the characters have to kind of, I mean, they had that, you know, that love earlier, right? Mm -hmm. And it's a suppressed thing. That's going to be hard as an actor because you want to, you know, maybe just jump his bones. I don't know, but you know what you do because that's I'm not the I'm getting character. a window into you right now. I see. Okay. No, but it's going to be hard as an actor to suppress that long love, I think, you know. That's a challenge. Yeah, well, I think the challenge is more in... I, I think the suppression has happened over decades. So so long has gone by that you, either he, I thought probably he was dead or with someone else or even the worst case would be that he forgot about me and moved on and, and he did. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, okay. she was right about that. Yeah. And I think love doesn't stay alive for forever. It can, it can die or it can be killed and I, I, I don't feel like she's still thinking about him. Yeah. I don't think that that feeling of love was ever matched in her life again. 
who she married a, an okay guy after that, but I don't think those that feeling of true love that they were from when they were young and how they knew each other had been matched, but I don't think she's been pining about it. But then no. to have him suddenly reappear and then, you know, things, and then, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, then well, the mystery of love takes over it and does. it's reignited. Yeah, well, like yeah. I say, terrific job. My God, you were so spectacular on this. And uh, congratulations, best of luck with it.